So, really quick video today. Um, I will tell you guys what's been happening because um, I did promise I'd post in 2021 I would make a return, but it's not gonna be a really active return to this page specifically. I've moved, um, I'll explain to it deeper on later into the video. First of all, I gotta tell you guys how much um, insects I still have left. Um, last time I posted anything was in like 2018, I believe. That was like the golden age of my um, insect hobby life. I got a lot of species that year. Um, I sold a lot of species that year as well. That's that's probably the year where I made the most money I've ever made in my whole life. It's pretty ridiculous of how much money you could make off of like selling spiders um, and breeding isopods to sell. But it just goes to show, you know, whatever you can do, you can make money out of it as long as you think of ways and develop, you know, certain things. But I won't get into that. So I have five species. Um, I have four species of isopods and I have a Cataxia polene sling. Um, oh, I have six. I have like a um, a uh, redback spider and I have a Eurodacus manicatus, which is like a black rock scorpion. So that's all I have. Let me show you really quick. Well, I have seven species, the cat. Here they are in all their glory. Check it out. I have, um, that's just a sweet potato plant growing. But check this out. I have a ton of isopods. Holy crap, what just happened? Look at that. Look at all these isopods. This is Armadillidium vulgare, and this isn't even all of them. There's like a bunch in this tank just roaming around. This isn't my original colony. My original colony I gave away to my friend, and I kept like five to keep in here as a cleanup crew because before this, it was actually leatherleaf slugs. And when the leatherleaf slugs kind of like um, were getting too much to handle, I sold it to my friend Matthew. And, uh,. Ever since, the cleanup crew has just been breeding. They really thrived off the leather leaf slug poop. Like, they really like the leather leaf slugs. Um, I tried to not overpopulate it, but it just kept, they just kept breeding. And now I have over a thousand in here. What's cool too is that, other than Amelidium vulgare, there is dwarf white isopods. Now that's not a baby, that's actually a different species. That species of isopods stays that size and they can actually reproduce without any mating. You know, there's one there. You can kind of see it. It's got a very different body shape, so you can tell this is a different species. So that just stays that size. So technically, yeah, I have seven species. Over here is my Porcelio Scaber. Dang, I need to clean this glass. But these ones are just a little bit more uh, uh, bigger. They also don't curl up into a ball. Their shells are much more rough like much like sandpaper, but it's not like rough, rough. It's like, you know, textured. You can see them. Let me show you what I mean. All right, look at that. Look how many isopods there are. Now I kept these guys because I've always just liked isopods. Isopods have been my, uh, they've been like the number one invertebrate for me. The number one was probably like slugs. But slugs got a little bit too much and I've just really liked isopods since. Like isopods are just they're just fascinating, easy to keep, and really uh, you know. So down here is Porcelionitis pruinosis, which you won't see because I only have like 20 of them and they're all hiding on the dirt. So once they start breeding, they'll be uh it'll be pretty cool. These guys breed fast. I used to keep this back in 2017, but a bunch of cockroaches killed them all. Well, well not killed them all, but infested their home and took over the food and stuff. So that's sad. These guys breed rapidly. Like when I say rapidly, the entire tank will be teeming with them and you'll have to like, you know, uh, feed some to your fish or whatever. And over here is a, uh, what is it? Redback spider. I don't know if you can see it. I can't even see it either, but it's somewhere in here. Um, there's a redback spider in there. Originally, I wanted this to be like full of redback spiders, but I think I'm gonna get rid of it. I'll give the redback spider to like my friend and the fish tank will turn into like, I don't know, it'll turn into something. It'll have to be an arboreal species because this is an arboreal tank. Now I'll take you to my other species, which is in the garage. Boom. Welcome to my um, pretty small garage, actually. Here is my bench grinder. Well, not bench grinder belt grinder. This is what I use to make my knives in because 
Um, fun fact, I've actually moved on to knife making because before all the bug stuff, I was into knives, making knives. Well, not making knives, making knives, but it was like crappy knife things. So here's an example of one I made a long time ago. This is not a knife. This is just a piece of steel that looks like a knife. It can act like a knife, but it's really, really trash. So here I have my other isopods. Um, here's some, uh, what is this? Like yo's. This is made by my friend Aline. Um, this is developed for snails and slugs. Sorry, this is developed for slugs specifically. Um, you mix it with water and it, you know, you feed it as a paste, but yeah. I've noticed that the isopods really, really like this stuff, but sh um, she has not answered me in like two years. I hope she's okay. She's the only one who knows how to make this stuff. Um, I just hope she's okay, but it's all good because that, you know, it's, 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 that stuff is good, but her life is more important. So anyway, so here is my Porcelio Lavis. Let me see if I can find one for you. Uh, where is it? Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Let me show you. Oh, right. There's one. These ones are like the Porcelio Scabers, except they're really big, like significantly bigger and uh, smooth, and they like to borrow more. Here is my Flogius Hirsutus, and Clary, that's her name. This one I've had since uh, 2017, and she has grown really big since then. I got her as like a tiny sling that was like three millimeters big, and look at her now. She's just, she's so amazing. There she is. Look at her. Look at how huge she is. The thing is, she'll get even bigger. Look at that. Look at that size comparison. So yeah, that's that. And here's one that you've seen before, but this is actually their separate colony. All right, here we go. As you can see, they're really, really tiny. They're really good for like actual cleanup crew because reptiles won't uh, target them since they're so small and they won't harm any of your reptiles because they're so small and literally you'll forget about them and they'll keep breeding in there and just eat all the all the reptile poop so for bioactive enclosures this is really good stuff for them so yeah um lots has happened since i've been active on this account if you guys follow my other accounts um, you'll know what's up but for anyone who's been just stayed on this account um thank you so much for like you know, sticking with me and liking my post when I was active. But what's happened since then is that one, we sold a house. Two, I started a business in knife making. Um, not custom knife making, but like handmade knives. Um, I'm really aiming for my knives to be top of the range type stuff. So basically, I just haven't had enough time for the, well, I do have time for the inverts, but I wanted to focus all my time for the knives. That's why I still have isopods and stuff because one, I really like isopods, like isopods are my favorite inverts, purely because they're easy to breed. Number two, they're really interesting to watch. Um, the color morphs, the behavior, what they eat, how they eat. Um, it's really interesting. Um, three, if I have like a salad that I'm not gonna eat anymore that I just don't wanna um, finish or I have like, wow, that just, that sounds so first world, like food that you don't want to eat. Anyways, um, so yeah, salad scraps, vegetable scraps, any kind of scraps that we don't eat, like carrot peels, potato peels, anything like that, it'll go to the isopods because they'll eat it. They will break it down because they'll eat pretty much anything that they can eat. I can make money off of it if I really have to because It'll get to a point where you have to kind of like dial it down. You either have to sell a bunch because they've overpopulated or you gotta put them into new containers, which I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna have to sell them. It doesn't matter how much I sell them for as long as I just get rid of them. So I'll probably sell it for like, um, I'll probably like 50 for 15 bucks. So yeah, that's it. Um, you, you, some of you guys might wanna see the knives I made if I've been talking about it so much. Here it is. So if you guys, um, I don't know if invert people or knife people, but it's got a Kydex sheath, which is like a durable plastic, it's fully weather resistant, all that. It's got a micata handle. Micata is a composite material. Um, you get your material, 
in a bunch of layers, then you compress it with like resin, then when it hardens, it's practically bulletproof. It's weatherproof material, it's really good stuff. Here we go, here is the knife. You can see it's kind of got like a mirror polish here, but on the other side, it's satin. That's because I've been experimenting with like blade finishes. So this is like a satin blade finish. And this is a mirrored blade finish, which I like the mirrored, if you ask me. This thing is tough as hell. You can put this for pretty much majority of all the serviceable tasks you need to do with, with a knife. Cut something, chop something, slice, uh, stab something, pry. You can pry with this. It's five millimeters thick. You can pry with this, no issues. That's the knife, Tokyo Stinger. I have another Tokyo Stinger design, Mark 5. Mark 5 Tokyo Stinger. It's gonna be epic, it's gonna be cool. I have another one which I'm working on for a friend of mine. This is the Ringer. It's a bit more combat orientated and a bit medieval type. I'll talk about this more later on, but don't worry, I will still do inverts. Later on in the future, I want to have my license. I'll probably do a lot of like um, tambourine mountain videos. Like I'll go there, find bugs. So yeah, that is, that's pretty much it. That's all that's been happening in my life. Uh, so much has happened, I can't just wrap it up. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you guys want to follow along, um, follow my uh, knife account and my personal. I'll be posting a lot there. Other thing, um, video with the spiders on my face. Uh, that was like, if I look back at it now, I just look so weird. Um, but uh, that was good. That was like my first ever kind of video to pop out there. So um, one of my videos, the, uh, the trapdoor spider one, that blew up like big time, it had like seven mil views. Man, I should really stop milking this. I've mentioned this a lot in my um, other accounts, um, but yeah, so seven mil views. And that's purely because I just decided to post it. I wasn't aiming for seven million views. So I think a lesson learned there, if you wanna do something, as long as it's not gonna harm anyone else, just even if you think it's not good enough, do it anyway. So whether that be like music that you wanna put out, um, artwork, it's mostly in the art department actually, if I'm being honest. A film that you made, a uh, video, anything, you know, writing, just put it out there. Cause you never know if it'll actually gain traction. But yeah, uh, that got 7 million views. I'm really happy that blew up. Um, I used a bunch of that money to buy like knife materials. Here we are. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.